All right, my construction entrepreneurs. Now, let's talk about 20-day preliminary notice, which is now just called preliminary notice, right? And a lot of people refer to it as prelim. Now, let's talk about the belief behind prelims. There's a lot of us out there that feels that prelim is a little humbuggish, right? <laughs> uh, feel that we shouldn't file a prelim because the general or the owner may feel a certain way. And, and this is true because a lot of customers, a lot of consumers, and a lot of generals, and a lot of subs feels that a prelim is actually you filing um, a lawsuit almost to that extent. Almost you're filing uh, something wrong uh, as if something wrong has already been done. And that's not the premise behind this, right? Uh, a prelim is to protect you, uh, especially as a subcontractor. Um, I, I need you to look at it, at it this way. Uh, a prelim actually allows the owner to know that you are working on that project. Now, every owner wants everyone to be paid on that project. Why? Because everyone working on that project has a right to file a lien against their property, right? And we're talking about whether it's residential or commercial. You have a right to file a lien against that if you're not paid, okay? Now, there's different processes with, with each one. They're similar, but they're different. Um, but let me explain this to you. When you file a prelim, which you should for every project, every project should get a prelim. And we're going to go over uh, uh, filing a prelim and the request for information to file a prelim. We're going to go over that too as well. We're going to pull up some forms, kind of go over that and, uh, and show you how easy it is to do it to protect you and your company. Okay. Now, when you file a prelim, you must understand that when you do file it to the owner of that property, um, you must do at least uh, some type of receipt of mail, okay? Certified, registered, express mail, overnight delivery. I want you to get a receipt. You need proof that you sent it, okay? Now, you can do the, the uh, preliminary notice before you start the project. You can actually hand deliver it and have them sign off that they received it before you start the project, okay? You can actually do that, especially if you have all that information. It's great. But now also realize that um, it's up to 20 days after, right? So if you do a prelim, whenever you file that prelim, you're covered 20 days before that date. Okay, so if you filed on the 21st day, then you'll be 20 days before the 21st day. Okay, that's what it will cover you on. Okay, so if your project was one day and you decide to file on the 21st day, that doesn't, you, you missed the date to be covered, if that makes sense. Now you can still file, okay? Don't think that just because you missed that time frame, you can still file. Okay, now um, let's do this here. Uh, now, once you file, then uh, uh, after that, there's a few other forms that follows that on you receiving payment. You know, there's a uh, there's a conditional, and then there's an unconditional release. Okay, and we're going to get into that as well. All right. So what we're going to do here first, we're going to cover um, basically um, the, uh, the, you, you, the first thing you need to do, you need to file um, info to, uh, to find out who are the subs, who, who, are the, who is the general out there. You need the basic prelim information. Now, this form is a little bit long here, okay? Which is, which is okay. Um, it can be simple, and I'll show you another simple one that I usually receive from my generals, 
if I'm actually being a sub on a particular project. And it's the same similar one that I will send to my subs if I'm actually a prime on a contract. So basically, this is a form I just pulled off the internet. I just Googled it and it gave me a PDF version and it's something I can actually print out and send to my general uh, contractor to get me the information, okay? And if you see here, it shows to general contractor, has a uh, general contractor's address, needs to input that in regards to what job, its location, um, and then you, you get that information again, who's the contact person and title, Okay, phone number, fax, email, you get all this owner, developer, address, uh, contact person, title, the lender, if there's a lender, there's a loan number, we want that information as well. Uh, or maybe there's a landlord, right? Because you're doing some, uh, some work to upgrade that house, right? You wanna find out who that person is, okay? Uh, 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 if there's a bond involved in that, in that in that uh that job there now mind you remember you know i said this through other videos we're not talking about the bond that the contractor requires you to get hold on here that the bond requires you to get okay we're not talking about that we're talking about a payment bond we're talking about performance bonds um that you're required to get on on certain projects okay now if there's a payment bond involved then you 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 find out the buying company that address who's the contact person for that because you may have to go to that extent okay and then you'll get all that information there okay and basically i just pulled this up off the internet and um now this is what i usually get or i'll send out so this is from one of my my general contractors that I'll do some sub work with as a subcontractor, mainly for the Walmart projects. Um, and as you see here, they 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 send this out, and I'll also send this out to my subs as well. Okay, uh, or if I'm like I said, if I'm the prime, I'll also type up something like this and send this out to them. Uh, I usually send it out as part of the bid package. Okay, because I don't want to be question about it later okay uh the people that do file for these prelims they need this information get it to them early as soon as it, soon, soon as they get awarded you like their price send it to them so basically this is what it this is what it says here okay uh the project location uh the general contractor information uh, uh, listed as additionally insured is Walmart, so that's the owner of the project. There's no lender, and there's no payment bond or surety company involved in this project. Okay? So basically, I have received the information for this project. Okay? I received the information for this project. And I know uh, who's the GC, and I also know who's the owner. Okay? That's clearly there, and that's the information you need to move forward with that, okay? Um, uh, once you have that information, okay, then on the contract estate license board, or you can once, once also Google it as well, um, now also know there's a notice of mechanic liens. Um, uh, the notice of anytime you're doing notice of mechanic liens, it must accompany the uh, lien claim. Okay, and and that also must be sent by certified registered first class um, as proof. Okay, uh, failure to send a properly worded notice with the lien claim could result in the lien being unenforceable. Okay. So let's say um, um, you send out this prelim and everything is everything is going great. You get paid. Well, to get paid, they're going to ask you for a uh, conditional waiver and release upon up on re, conditional waiver and release on progress payment. Okay. All right. So. Um, this this part is, is is pretty simple here, okay? Once you, they're gonna ask you for this to pay you, 
okay? So what you're, what you're basically saying is that I'm owed a check, I'm owed a certain amount for a certain amount of work I have done, and I'm looking to get paid. And basically, this is going to satisfy them as far as any liens, holds, unpaid wages, unpaid material suppliers. You're basically starting a process saying, um, um, I, I'm taking care of them, okay? Notice this document waives the claimant lien, payment stop, notice, and payment bond rights effective on receipt of payment. A person should not rely on this document unless satisfied that the claimant has received payment, okay? So conditional waiver and release on progress payment. So we're gonna give them another form after this once we receive that payment. But let's go ahead and fill this out. So name of claimant is your name there. So W Construction, you'll put your name there, okay? Uh, name of the customer was Tri State General Contractors, okay? Cool. Okay. Also, too, you can also put, let's say if Tri-State, let's say you're working for Tri-State, but Tri-State is actually a sub and you're a third tier sub, then you can put the other prime contractor's name here as well. Okay. Uh, location is uh, 4352, doing it right. Okay, owner is Walmart stores. Uh, through date. Now the through date is very important because it's the date that you're you're getting you're getting paid through. Okay, so that means that if if you're getting a progress payment for work that that you completed in October, then you're getting paid through October. If you're receiving a progress payment for work you completed in November, then you're right that date, okay? So let's say I'm getting paid for November 1st, 2018, okay? Let's say I, they missed some payments or something. So I'm getting paid through this date, excuse me, okay? Um, maker a check would be who you work for, okay? That would be try. State general contractors, and you want to make sure you get their name correct. Okay, amount of check is fifty thousand. Check payable to A M W Construction. C. Okay, so this next portion here is it says. Uh, this document does not reflect any of the following. Retention. Remember, you just put, oh, I put $50, huh? Oh, no, okay. So it's not actually showing. No, why it's not showing that. Why it's not. Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, they owe me fifty thousand. Okay. Um, another thing is is uh, doesn't include retention extras for which the claimant has not received payment on. Okay. Uh, the following progress payment for which the claimant has re, uh, previous, previously given a conditional waiver and release, but has not received payment. You write that there. Okay. Dates of the waiver and release. Okay. Amounts of unpaid progress payments. You put that there. Usually, you know, we shouldn't be uh, filling this out here. Um, if we, if, if the payments are coming quicker than normal, yes, then, you know, we can fill in that exceptions portion of this form, but usually you should be getting that payment before you actually fill out another waiver. Okay. So you assign here, you give your title. Okay. And then the date of signature. Okay, so that's that, okay? That's that, so you send that to them before you pick up the check or while you're there to pick up the check, okay? Either way, so you give them that, okay? 
And then next, um, next, what you what you um, what you would do here um, uh, once once that's there. You have that um, that filled out. That goes to to actually um, that goes to your uh, your general, okay. That goes to your general, and then um, once you once you receive that progress payment, there's an unconditional waiver release upon progress payment, okay? Basically you're saying, hey, I got it, this is the information. So you do that same information throughout this form here, okay? All right? So basically you're saying that you have been paid, you're good to go, you do the signature, you sign. This is pretty, pretty simple stuff, okay? All right? So you see here, this document waves and releases lien, stop payment notices, and payment bond rights to the claimant as for labor and services provided and equipment and materials delivered to the customer on this project project through the through date of this document. Rights based upon labor or services provided or equipment or materials delivered percent to a written change order that has been fully executed by the parties prior to the date that this document is signed by the claimant or waived and released by this document unless listed as exceptions below. The claimant has received the following progress payment. I put the 50,000 here, okay? Put that there, I fill out all same information I filled out on the last one, put that there, okay? And uh, I'll sign, put my title and signature. Okay, set. Now the other form here, what we do here is um, uh, uh, there's also, let's say you're receiving final payment, okay? I also got a uh, form that sometimes the general will send you an actual um, release form here too. Like I got one here, All right? Let's see here, let's see if I can show you this one here and then we'll come back to that one here. So here is a, um, oh wow, here's one here that I, I got here that I just signed today actually uh, for a Walmart I did in Madeira, right? Um, so the, here it is at the top here. It's kind of hard to see. It's not focusing in very well. But anyway, uh, at the top it shows name a claimant, uh, then name, name a claimant. I have AMW Construction. And then uh, name of customer, Shames Construction. It's different uh, GC. Uh, the other one was Tri-State. Uh, this one here is Cleveland Avenue in Madeira. It's a Walmart there. Then it gives owner, says Walmart and the store number. And then it says through date. Through date is October 31st. So I'm, I'm being paid through October uh, uh, 31st, okay? Uh, and then here it shows the, the amount here, which is uh, they owe me, well, they actually paid me $50,009.52, okay? And then I'm signing this, basically telling them that, uh, that I received this. Now, if you look here at the top, this is an unconditional waiver and release on progress payment. And I'm basically saying, yes, I received this, okay? Here's my, uh, my name, signature. I put a uh, owner, uh, it says uh, title, put owner, and then the date. I actually signed that today. I got this, I got this check in FedEx today. So I'm actually doing this and sending this off to them ASAP uh, so we can get to the next step because they still owe me some money here. So that's one that you will see. And a lot of times you'll receive that from your, your, your customer, okay? 
they're, they're sending off with your check. Um, I never like my checks being sent to me. Always like to be, always like, always like to pick my checks up. But this particular company, Shames Construction, is in Central California, Northern California. So I'm not about to drive up there for 50 grand. Now I'll drive up there for 100 grand, but uh, but they're pretty straightforward, and they they usually overnight it, and they take care and handle business. Anyone else? I I, I just just like when people say, hey, your check is in the mail. I don't trust it. Don't put my stuff in the mail. I'll meet you and I'll come pick it up. Unless you gain a little rapport with me and then we can do some FedEx and overnight it and things like that. We also have to remember as subcontractors, this, this right here, this 50 grand right here is the blood of my business. I don't play with payments, okay? I will file a lien on you. I, I don't care. And that's one thing that we have to understand here is, as subcontractors, uh, it's too expensive to be nice. Okay? It's too expensive to be nice. I don't care if you're going to give me more work. Pay me my money. I don't care if you got a whole list of jobs for me. Pay me my money. Okay? I recently went to an office. Um, let me tell you the story here. We're going we're gonna to finish this deal here and, and jump to the next portion. I recently went to an office for a general contractor. They owed me, they owed me uh, uh, $238,000 for a project that I did, okay? Uh, matter of fact, for that same sent to Walmart, they owe me $238,000 for that, okay? I get there, the, the, uh, the, the project accountant makes a lot of mistakes. I always have to deal with issues every month dealing with this person. Well, this time I went there, because they, they, I think a, a lot of people that are W-2s really don't understand the subcontractor environment, right? We don't get paid weekly, okay? Not every time do we get paid weekly. There's times things don't flow right, so we get paid, like me, I mostly get paid for my partnerships once a month. And sometimes that'll be once every other month, you know, depending on the way things have flowed and the way things have fallen into their different pockets and what is owed, okay? So we're looking at different things and trying to figure out how to get past these different obstacles and challenges to make sure we're, you know, the owners are getting paid on a regular basis, okay? During the summer, it's plenty of work. I'm on a weekly, you know, but sometimes these things change because just the way business happens. Okay, people take longer to pay than I, it takes longer for me to get paid. Now, a lot of people don't understand that's, that's W-2 employees, that the longer it takes for us to get paid as subcontractors, the more expensive that money is. Things start to pile up. Okay, so here it is. I was supposed to get paid in 30 days. I can pay those, those vendors in 30 days and kind of back them down or at least get them down a little bit. And then I can also take care of all my payroll that I actually put out. But now you, you're taking longer to pay me. Now vendors timeline are adding up, right? And I may, after a certain amount of time, now you get that one and a half fee uh, tacked on to your, your bill after you're late, after a certain amount of time. That's additional money I didn't, I didn't account for in my bed. So now, so, so to avoid that, you really need to call. You need to find out who's issuing your check and you need to call and you need to send them their proper paperwork. Once you send them their proper paperwork because you have already filed your preliminary notice, then you need to have them and you need to make sure they understand that you need to get paid, okay? All right, so let's go to the next one here. So uh, we talked about uh, doing uh, unconditional waiver. Um, the un We're doing the unconditional waiver and we went over that. And then there's a conditional waiver release on final payment, okay? Uh, conditional waiver release on final payment. And basically the same information here. Okay. Once you get to doing this, this is, um, you know, if you got no claims, then then you leave this blank. Okay. 
Uh, you got any things that's old here, then you'll put that in there. Any extra work that you may have done, then at the last minute, then um, then you add that there, okay? So you make sure you file your paperwork. And that's it, you know? That's really it. And um, I think on the next video, I'll cover, oh, once you get that, that, that unconditional waiver and release upon um, progress payment, then you'll file the unconditional waiver and release. Oh, I'm sorry, once you file the conditional release on final payment, then you'll file an unconditional waiver and release on final payment once you have received that payment, okay? One is to receive payment and one is after you, re you have received payment. So do not file an unconditional if you have not received the payment. Only time you'll file that unconditional if you're just, hey, we're, you're handing me a check and I'm handing you this, okay? If there's some transactions here where you, you got to send that request, then get a check, then you send that paperwork back, then that's what you do. Please do not file the unconditional if you haven't received anything, okay? You put yourself in a, um, in a legal bind, okay? So you have to understand that. So that's what I want to cover there, okay? Now, on the next video, I also talk, I'll get into talking about the, the prelim. Um, I'll talk about some timelines as well, and then we'll get into how to actually perfect the lien, okay? What are the steps to perfect the lien in case you actually have to perfect a lien on someone? Okay, and then I'm gonna have to do one um, separately for residential and uh, public works. Okay, and I'll, I'll do two separate videos on that. So that's what's coming next. Uh, enjoy you, my enjoy. <clears throat> I enjoy you watching my construction entrepreneurs. Remember, if you like this video, it was really helpful. Subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. I'm a long way from it, okay? So tell friends, make sure you share this video so they can subscribe, and let me know what else videos you want me to do. Let me know down in the comments. If there's some videos you would like to see me do, let me know. If there's some information you would like to, me to uh, do a video on, let me know, okay? I appreciate everyone else that have reached out to me for information. Um, uh, hopefully I got you some information that's, that's helpful and you continue to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. Take care and remember, hustle hard, then hustle harder. See you on the next one, my construction entrepreneurs.